Hi there again, this is the Cybersecurity Graybeard Self-Described. Today I'm going to chat about how to get started in cybersecurity. I'm going to talk about it from a couple of different angles, uh, from college to trade school, etc. Uh, before I get started again though, I did want to do what everybody else does on these channels, and that's publicize myself. Uh, I am doing podcasts now, and you can find them out there under Cybersecurity Graybeard. Uh, they're all over the place, uh, Spotify, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts. And also, obviously, the YouTube, which is my preferred mechanism. So if I do content shares or interviews, uh, however, so far, everything has pretty much just been listening to me talk. So please share, uh, like, comment. Uh, I'd love to hear from folks. I have a website, cybergraybeard.com. And you can also email me at cybergraybeard at gmail.com. Reach out, give me ideas. Uh, as you've noticed before, I will take your ideas and turn them into episodes. The whole idea here really is to help early professionals and students not only move forward and get into uh, cybersecurity, but also how to grow your profession no matter really where you are or what you're doing. So with all that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So how to start in cybersecurity. Um, what I would say is before you even start that, find out what you love to do and find a, way, find a way to make money at it. I've told my kids that for years, and the most important thing in life is happiness. So whatever you're gonna do, focus on that first. And when you talk about cybersecurity, there are so many facets. Uh, I have a, a document over here, I mean, just to read a few things. When you talk about cybersecurity, we could talk about encryption, spam protection, um, cybersecurity awareness training, data loss prevention, uh, security information and event management tools, application code scanning, DDoS mitigation, networks, firewalls, antivirus, endpoint protection, and on and on and on. There are so many areas out there, it's quite overwhelming. It's almost like you're going to go ahead and build a jet aircraft, and it's like, I want to do everything at once. You need to focus. You have the engines, you've got the wings, the body, you've got the interior. All the things that go into making that aircraft take off are important, and there are certain aspects of the aircraft, or in this example, this case, in cybersecurity that you might be interested in. So see if you can learn and focus and find one path to go down. If you can't, then I would say let's take a step back and look at some of the more overarching technologies. Uh, the first one is networking. I stand by the fact that I personally believe to be the best cybersecurity professionals, you have to understand networking. Everything revolves around the networking um, when it comes to literally lateral movement, vertical movement, the penetrations, the vulnerabilities. Yeah, it's going to be an application that's vulnerable, but you have to go through a network to get it. To understand the whole path the firewalls, the ports, the protocols, the mechanisms, Ethernet, fiber, switches, routers, the OSI model, so many technologies that go into this, and it really revolves around the networks at the core. So if you're just starting and you don't know where to go, look into networks and see what you think of that. Another area that's important, especially if you want to get into forensics or you want to deal with endpoint or uh, incident response and um, uh, information security, IRIS, if you will, uh, those, if you know how to develop code, uh, script, that's helpful. It's actually very helpful. Personally, I haven't done very much of that in my career. I have done a little bit of scripting and I can take a look at some code, uh, do a little reverse engineering. But if you're going to go to a customer that has been perpetrated or penetrated, you look at the ransomware that's out there, WannaCry, uh, for example, or you look at some of the, the virus attacks, the big ones like the I Love You virus, getting that code and reverse engineering it in a secure environment. Obviously, you don't want to put it on your network and just infect everything. You need to have it in a, a secured area. Uh, that's another area to learn about that I'll talk momentarily about. Um, but coding, uh, scripting, Perl, PHP, uh, C++, uh, still very popular. Um, not really an area that I know a lot about. If you do want to get into the forensics and the reverse engineering, I definitely recommend you go down the path of looking at uh, scripting, coding, uh, and things of that nature. Um, so with all that said, again, find what you love to do, find a way to make money at it. Now, once you have an idea, look at your background, look at what you're good at. Not everybody is cut out for college. Not everybody has the determination, the desire, the intelligence, the capability of going to college, and not everybody has to. If you are on that path and you do want to go to college or you're going to college and you're going to come out or you came out of college with a cybersecurity degree or information security, information services, great. 
You do that, you can take your bachelor's degree and you can go to organizations, large places, you know, the, the big four, the Ernst & Young's, the PricewaterhouseCoopers, um, uh, Deloitte. Uh, you could look at technology companies, Alien Vault, uh, Symantec, McAfee, uh, IBM. Go to those organizations and then just look for jobs in the areas that you want. Don't be picky, especially when you're just starting out. You need to build a resume and you need to learn and there's nothing wrong with just jumping in going to work for endpoint or identity and access management and then coming up and then moving laterally in an organization or leaving to go somewhere else uh, I was on an internal call at my company the other day and an early professional asked a question does it make sense to just hop a job every six to twelve months to get a lot of experience or do you stay somewhere for a while um, my recommendation really was stay somewhere, especially in the beginning of your career for two to three years. If you're going to move within a company that doesn't look quite as bad, but if you're going to hop companies every six to 12 months because you want the bigger, better deal, it's going to come back and bite you. Eventually, two, three, four jobs down the road, people are going to start to say, I, I don't want to give you six months to have you bolt. It's expensive to hire somebody, so uh, so you need to, need to stay somewhere. So that's coming out with a college degree. I think that's an area that almost everybody figures you have to do. Not true. So I'm going to take a little bit of a segue and I'm going to go to uh, what I would call as trade schools or community colleges. There are two-year degrees that are specifically focused on cybersecurity. They're becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, I actually helped a local community college create their curriculum and this fall they're opening up a new campus in a, a small suburb or actually it's a larger suburb now because it's growing outside of the major city near where I live and they are um, coordinating with a, a state university for a four-year degree. So the, the community college will give you two years and associates, then you can piggyback on and go to the state school and come out with a four-year bachelor's and the two-year associates. The nice thing about that is once you get the associate's degree, you may be getting an apprenticeship, an internship, or just a full-paying job at 15 to 20 bucks an hour working in a network operations center or a security operations center. Really good places to start learning. Yeah, sometimes you have to do second or third shift, but we all have to pay our dues. I certainly did. So again, college degrees, cyber, infosec, um, if you want. Me, I have a degree in economics. It was 25 years ago. I came up in the cybersecurity, or not, I came up in the technological revolution, as I like to say, and I was blessed that I was able to work retail and then move up and on in my career. Uh, I still think it's possible. A lot of arts and sciences people come out, even business people with finance degrees. But um, fundamentally, if you have critical thinking, you can read, you can write, you can present, you can talk, uh, then you can get into consulting, you can get into cybersecurity. If you're more into the tech, and hands-on and you have a degree in programming or coding, uh, you can come right out and go work in incident response. Uh, red teaming is, uh, I think, it's a lot of fun. It's something that people do, ethical hacking, penetration testing, vulnerability management. Uh, those are areas if you're deep into the networking and, and hands-on. So those are fields that you can look at as you're, you're either coming out of school or as you're starting and then you may want to move away from where you're at. Um, the next and last way really is no... Um, education beyond high school. I stand by this. I've seen people do it. I, I mean, I, I, my stepson's going through it. I absolutely recommend this. Uh, if you don't want to go to college, you can't afford it, uh, or you just want to get into the workforce, and that's the following. Start out with an A-plus certification. Um, I forget the name of the organization that does it. Uh, anyway, look it up. A-plus. You get that. It's two separate exams, and then you move on to the Network Plus, another exam, and then you move on to Security Plus. Once you have your A+, plus, you can go work at Best Buy, you can go work at Walmart, you can work as a, a tech, a geek squad person. Uh, then you can start making 10, 12, 15 bucks an hour. Once you do Network Plus, uh, you probably can get a job at Help Desk and then you're starting to make between 12 and $18 an hour. Again, the prices are going to vary depending on where you live. Um, and then once you get Security Plus, you can work in a NOC, you can work in a SOC, you can really start to move up and forward. And I, I stand by it. I've, I've, I've interviewed people like this. Um, I've hired people like this at other companies that I've worked for. Uh, if you have the determination, the drive, the intelligence, you don't have to have a four-year degree to get into this. Um, there are some jobs that are going to require it, especially as you move on up into management. But just getting started, don't think you have to go all the way right out of the gate. So again, A plus to Network plus to Security plus, um, and I don't know why I can't remember that stupid name of the, of the search. So I'll have to look it up later. Anyway, mind blank. Um, so. With all that said, uh, look for what you like. Again, focus on networking. You can focus on development uh, and code. You have the um, 
penetration testing, vulnerability management, all sorts of things. Shoot me an email, cybergradebeard at gmail.com. Ask specific questions if you'd like. Uh, let me know what you think. Hopefully this is a little bit beneficial to you. Um, you know, First and foremost, find out what you love to do and find a way to make money at it because happiness is the most important thing. Thanks, and we'll talk to you next time.